Okay, so my plan for today is to basically continue on where I left off last night. And yes, I did come back to the model table yesterday. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just continue on. And, uh, I, and the plan is to finish the rigging on, on this side of the ship. And, uh, and then I'll do the other side off camera and quickly get it done. Um, yeah, I don't see any reason why I can't do that. Now I know that there is some rigging when I do it on this side. It will also have been done on the other side because it will be just sort of like a single strand of something that's going to go in the center. Um, anyway, once again, starting to ramble here. Uh, let's, let's roll back and I'll show you what I did last night. Okay. A lot has happened here this afternoon since uh, we ended off this episode. Oh, it must be about five hours ago now when we were talking about running a piece of easy line from this corner here up to this islet. Yeah, my neighbor's come and gone from coffee and uh, done other stuff. And I did check my video. It did finally get uploaded. It was late, but uh, so for those of you who like to watch it on the hour, sorry about that. Um, okay, let's reposition and get ourselves sort of back the way we were. I think the thing to do here is maybe just touch a little bit of CA to the bottom of this, where nobody looks anyway, and then maybe see if I can't get some uh, the end of the easy line to stick right there. And then we'll run a run a piece up here, and then anyway, let's let's just do it instead of talk about it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do this a, a little bit differently than what I had originally said. I think I'm just going to leave it attached to the spool. And, uh, and instead of cutting off a short piece, I think I'm going to feed it through the, through the eyelet. And, uh, where's my tweezers here? Alright. Okay, I'll I'll, uh, I'll move you in here. All right, now the eyelet. I'm looking in the monitor right now, and it's sort of blended in by that uh, by that pipe. Oh, what's wrong? Okay, I'm going to, uh, I forgot to put on my uh, special glasses here. Yep. Okay, sure a good thing I can cut out the nonsense and post here. Why is that not going through? Do you know what? When I, when I painted this eyelid, I, uh, oh, for heaven's sakes. All right, just hang on. Just hang on here. All we have to do is make a very tiny little hole. Clean the fluffy off the end of that. There we go. Okay, like I said, it's a good thing I can cut out the nonsense. I picked this thing up three times and dropped it. There. Oh. Okay, we're going to do a different plan here. We're going to put it in. Okay, now with my other hand, see if I can grab it with Tony's tweezers here. No, I, I didn't, but I think I... I think I can grab it here. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now, put a little bit of CA on the bottom of that corner and then just touch that. Then we'll pull it tight later and cut it off at the eyelet. Makes sense to me.
Okay, I've taken off the 24-200 and stuck the macro lens on here. Don't give ourselves lots of slack. Now, the idea is I want to be able to just touch the end of this line just underneath right there after I get a little bit of CA on there. And everybody's telling me how it will instantly instantly stick. So uh, maybe I should have just a little bit a little bit less a little bit more slack and just, oh and I then I drop it yet. Okay, we'll get it, don't worry, we'll get it. Looks like there's a fluffy or something on that on the end of that easy line. Okay, now, I'm holding it a little tighter this time. Okay, so, now I realize that the, the ring is slightly fuzzy. That's because I'm focused on the on the corner here. Now, what I want to do is put a little bit of CAA underneath there. Okay, I like that. Now we'll touch it. Now is it going to stay there? Okay, I was kind of bending my semaphore there, but at least I didn't break it off. All right, I, I think I think we've got it. Do I do I dare try and reinforce it? Okay, I, I would think that's going to be good. Now we'll give that a few minutes and then we'll uh, take the slack off. Okay, I've repositioned slightly. And uh, we are now focused on the ring. Now this stuff has a stretch ratio, of, I think it's 5 to 1 or is it 7 to 1 or something ridiculous anyway. But I, I, I don't want to make it really tight. What, what's this on here? Well, got it, whatever it was. Okay, now I th I think the, w the way to go is just... Maybe what I should be doing is putting a little bit of blue tech, like where, like where the tweezers are. And, and just let it, just let it hang down. Then I know that, it, you know, that the tension's going to be there steady when I put the, uh... CA right there on the ring. Okay, you're going to have to excuse my big fingers here. There we go. I know that looks terrible, but uh, at least we, we got the right amount of... Okay. Now all we want to do is just don't bathe, don't bathe it. Just touch it there. Okay, I think a little over an hour has passed here now, and I'm just wondering: did I put enough CA glue on there, or is it going to be a case of when I lift this up, the line is going to pull through? No, it, I think it's probably good. Now if I can. If I can just cut that off right there and let the blue tack drop. Blue tack isn't big enough to hurt anything. Um, I don't know, I should try and cut it with the blade here. Or should I use the scissors? Um, this is not a new blade, so it's not really sharp. Maybe I should stick in a new blade. And then just sort of, sh sort of shear it along the, like that. Then I might accidentally cut the one I don't want to. Well, let, let's see how close I can get with the scissors. Now, I never did file one of these down like I was going to.
Okay. I think that's going to be alright. I don't think I need to put any more CA glue on that. Okay. We are supposed to be getting a blizzard tonight. I just saw it on the weather oh, about uh, an hour ago. Now, do we have time to do one more? Kind of feel like it. Okay, let's see if we can do one more. Let's see if we can uh, do the one that goes from right here to the eyelet we put in the deck right there. And what will be the best way to do go about it here? Okay, I want to go through this eyelet on the bottom. Maybe come at it this way. You know what? Why don't I very carefully take this off? Okay, I put it on the uh, deck in the back there. There we go. Okay. You know, I'm noticing I can see the brass on that ring there. I must have scratched it off somehow. Scratched the paint off. Do the blue tack thing again. I'm gonna put some blue tack right on there. Okay. Just drop that back down there. Now we'll pull it. Pull the slack out. Like that. There we go. Oops. Now maybe what I should do is uh, fasten this end on something. Maybe another piece of blue tack. You won't be able to see it, but you get the idea. Now this. I just want this just a little bit tight, not not stretched, just just snug. Um, okay, and we'll we'll just readjust here. And we'll put a little piece of blue tack on here. Whoops. Oh, come on. There. Alright. I'll just let that hang over the edge of the of the deck here. Oh, careful, Ron. Yeah, I don't think that's too tight. Okay. Now, we'll put a little bit of CA on both of those and let it cure. Now where's, where is the CA? Okay, like I said before, I can cut out the, the dead spots here.
Okay. Now we'll let that cure. I think we'll let it cure overnight. It's getting pretty late. What have we got here? 9.25 already. Yeah. Let's uh, see what we've got in the morning. Okay, it is morning. And our blizzard apparently is still on the way. We did get a, a bit of snow here last night. Now, now what's this with the scissors, right? Okay, I was going to move in and nip this this cord off. And I, you, do, you might remember I was talking about grinding down one of those shears so that I can actually get it closer so that the cutting edge is actually going to be closer to, to what it is you want to cut. See, the way, the way it is right now, um, well, without the macro lens, it's kind of hard to see. But I'm, I'm thinking that if I was to, say, grind this, this bottom one down here, then the cutting edge of the scissor will be able to get down closer to nipping something off. At least that's the plan. So I think I'm going to do that. I mean, it's not that I don't have enough grinders and files and stuff in the house. Um, yeah, let's, let's just see what we can do here. Okay, all I want to do is just take down this bottom one and maybe only, uh, I was going to say a quarter of an inch, but maybe even less than that from the end. And, and like I say, the idea is so that I can bring the cutting part of it closer to what I want to cut off. Now, I could use my, my uh, Dremel tool here. However, it's been my experience that when I use something like this, or my grinder down in the workshop or something like that, it heats up the metal. And, and when the metal gets hot, it loses its, you might say, hardness. That's been my experience. So what I'm going to do, even though it's going to take a lot longer and a little bit more elbow grease, I'm going to just take it down like this and periodically check it. And when I get it down to the place that I think is pretty close, then I'll, I'll finish it off uh, on my uh, uh, wet sander, uh, my Tormac. And uh, at least that's, that's the plan here. Okay, so here we go. Now this, this might take a while. And the idea is to keep checking it. Yeah, that is pretty hard metal because it's it's not uh, it's not coming off. So I, I was right. I, I wouldn't want to use this. Uh, okay, so I'll I'll show you when I'm done. You know what? I should really be. Uh, taking a close-up of it uh, for before and after. Now I probably did grind it down a little bit here, but very, very little. Anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my macro lens on and we'll do a before and after. Okay, now the bad feature of this is now that lower blade is much thinner and we can get it down closer to, to whatever it is that you want to nip off. Let's see if I can open it up here on camera. Okay, the idea is that that lower blade can get right down close to whatever you want to nip off. Alright, I think I beat that to death, haven't I? Now the bad feature is that blade is now weakened. If I was to drop these scissors on the floor and they were to land on, on this point here, it, it could bend it. Um, yeah, let's, let's try it out. I, I think it's a good idea. Now, it's a good idea for me. I'm not recommending you do it. Um, <laughs> Let's 
Okay, now the idea is the top blade is the one we've we've uh, machined. So we'll put this one under here, and at the top blade should be able to get closer to whatever it is you want to nip. I don't believe it. I nipped the wrong one. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Well, it's a good thing this stuff stretches. I can't believe it. Oh, for goodness sakes. I nipped the wrong one. On camera yet. Okay. Okay. I've uh, taken the end that we nipped off and I've re reattached it to the blue tack here. Now I don't want this real tight, but I want to have enough enough slack there that uh, yeah, that should be all right. Okay, let's re-glue that. Now let's make sure I get the right one this time. Alright. Now we'll do the one on the deck. Well, I guess it will get rid of this. Now, here's what's happened. I'm getting myself all ready to cut, cut this one off. And I noticed suddenly this one that ran up to here went slack. So either I didn't use enough CA glue or I didn't wait long enough for it to cure. So so this one here now now th these things stretch something fierce. If you remember we we tested that we actually tested this easy line out when we when we first got it and and it stretches un unbelievably so I, I could probably put it back in and, and do it again but but I, I don't want it tight I, I want it I want it just barely barely uh, taunt if you know what I mean and every time I keep uh, messing up here and I've, it gets about a half an inch shorter it gets tighter and tighter and tighter Okay, it slipped out of my fingers. It didn't break. Um, going to think about it. Okay, I have restrung this and I have re-glued it. And I used a, a little bit more CA glue on the uh, connection. I uh, I don't think it's going to break. I I can see when I'm when I'm pulling this easy line out like this that it, you know, it's, it wants to sort of say stay stiff. You might say up at the uh, where it goes through the eyelet. Anyway, I'm going to put the macro lens back on, and I want to give our uh, modified scissors here another try. I'm, I'm I'm convinced that the problem with this line breaking is it's not the scissors, it's it's me. Okay, what do you notice? about this easy line that we've just put on here. Like I've I've run the one down from, from this eyelet to the eyelet that is just right down there. Now what do you notice? Well you probably notice that you can't notice it. I'm realizing now that for for the cables that are 
I guess you would call these the stays from the for the funnel, you'd want to use something a little heavier. I think that when we when we get to doing the Rodney, uh, we we will uh, use something a little heavier. This is what I've got right now. This is excellent for the wires that are going to go back and forth between the uh, for the for the aerial. It's ab it couldn't be better, but I think that you'd want to use something a little heavier. Uh, it would be a little bit more believable, in other words. Um, now, I've already nipped off this one right here, and there's a, a line running right down, and it goes into a, an eyelet right there. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it, but there's, there's also an eyelet right there. Now, that, that's a, there, there must be a reason why it's there, but it, does, it just does not make any sense. It's, it's kind of... Uh, I, I don't know, it's almost like an afterthought or something. Uh, I, I don't think I put this in the wrong place. I'm pretty sure I put it in the right place, according to the manual, but it just, just doesn't make any sense to have an eyelet right there. Um, anyway, uh, let's put the macro lens on and, uh, and cut this one off. Okay now. Are we going to be wanting any line running from the center of anywhere to anywhere that's in the center here? Because that would be the, the next best one to do. Like what what was on the top of this thing right here? Was there something coming out of that? Um it it, it almost looks like there may have been something coming up out, out of the top of that. I think maybe I'll uh, see if I can find some pictures or drawings that make sense. Um, I, I do believe that there was something coming off of the end of this and the same on the other side and going somewhere. Um, <clears throat> like I said before, as long as we, as long as we have it so it's believable, you know, we, we know that there's, there's going to be easy line going, going across. You know, like like from 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 this yard arm or whatever you want to call it, going going all the way back. To this one here. Okay, something like that. Now there again you can you can hardly see them, however. <clears throat> Excuse me. These these lines do stand out against the white background of the case. They stand out really well. In fact, I can see the ones on the Bismarck from uh, <laughs> two or three arm lengths away. Um, yeah. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to uh, take a break here this afternoon and uh, go at this maybe a little later this evening for a while, and that'll have to be in tomorrow's rollback. So. Um, and we gotta do something about these, don't we? I think the blue tag trick will be good. Um, okay, thanks for watching everybody. And all being well, <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.